a few years have passed since I've started posting motovlogs on my YouTube channels and this is how my motovlogging setup looks and I can say that I am finally happy with it. So let me show you what I use and why I use for motovlogging stuff and for action. Welcome in the studio guys, I am Flash and I am a rider since 2013 a long time ago I've started riding bikes and this is uh, my current motovlogging setup and in this video I want to present it to you and tell you why I've chose this camera and all the accessories that I've needed to complete this setup and make it not only work but work in a very efficient way. So we will talk about the helmet, the camera, the mic of course and all the accessories to make the mic work and also to mount the camera on the helmet. And before we start, don't forget to like this video and subscribe if you are new here and you like uh, studio related stuff. Of course, I will not start posting motovlog stuff here on this channel. I have another channel for my English motovlogs, but I don't know how often I will uh, post there because my time is very limited right now. But since we will talk mostly about an action camera setup, I thought that this video will be helpful for some of you and also this is a question that I receive a lot on my main channels and people always ask me what I use for the motovlogs and what mic I am using, what setup I am using and yeah this is it. The <laughs> helmet that I use is from x Lite and it is called X803 and this right now is an older model but it is a pretty nice helmet and I have chose the carbon fiber version because I wanted the helmet to be the same weight as a normal helmet after applying all this stuff on it. So with the camera and all the accessories right now, I think it weights just like a normal helmet from um, normal fibers, not carbon fibers, glass fiber. I have been in search for almost two years for a helmet and I have finally decided to go with this x Lite because it has very good materials that will not degrade after one year. It is light, it is a uh, right shape for my type of riding and for my bike and it is a quiet helmet, so no wind noise, no uh, whistles and no, no anything. It is really quiet and if you want to open the vents, it is a really cool helmet in the summer. The camera that I've started using for motovlogging since I have done the unboxing for it on this channel is the DJI Osmo Action 4 and it is the best camera in my opinion for motovlogging at this moment and I have ditched my GoPro Hero 11 Black for it and I am still using the GoPro but not as an A cam but as a B cam on my mirror front facing me. It is still a great camera but not as reliable as the DJI and also it is a pain to take everything apart if you are using it for motovlogging and I don't know change a battery or um, offload some footage from the SD card. So what I have been wanting from my motovlogging setup was to be reliable and not have any footage corrupted or audio. Of course to have great video quality and audio quality and also to be fast. Like me when I am riding of course, no? <laughs> no. What I mean by fast is to be fast when I need to change a battery or an SD card when it is full or when I come back in the studio and I want to start editing. And for some years this was absolutely impossible with any GoPro. And right now, check this out, I want to take out the battery, bam, no problem. I took it out and right now I can uh, also exchange the SD card, the micro SD card of course. So yeah, this is beautiful in a true way. Also one thing to mention is that the setup is not 100% complete right now because the ND filters for the action camera are missing, they are back ordered right now and I don't know when I will get them. But yeah, let's say this is the night ride motovlogging setup complete edition. In daytime without the ND filters the motion blur is almost inexistent and the footage is uh, sometimes a bit choppy but can't do anything about it until they are delivered. But let's move on with the setup. So another beautiful thing about the Osmo Action 4 is that it is so easy to remove from the helmet if you want to remove it and store it maybe or if it rains. And another nice thing is uh, this adapter that DJI released and 
it uh, allows you to connect an external microphone and also provides another USB-C port if you want to charge the camera. I am not sure if it supports data transfer, but I usually use uh, SD card readers or micro SD card readers in this case, and it is very easy to remove. It looks like this. It is uh, made uh, especially with this purpose for motovlogging from what I have saw on their website. And I have finally managed to get rid of this adapter that I have been using from Boya. And this pulled out some great audio from the mic into the camera. But look at this. This is a bit dangerous. And if you hit this, yeah, you might damage the... USB-C port on the camera and you might cry after. If you are careful, you can use it as I was using it until now and yeah, I didn't damage my uh, port, but I'm uh, pretty happy that I finally got this one, which fits perfectly here and um, it is more sturdy and uh, more safe for the camera. Also smaller and looks better. So now what mic am I using for recording crisp audio directly from my helmet into the Action 4 and the mic that I have is for a few years right now used in the motovlogs and uh, this is the Rode SmartLav Plus and it is a smartphone dedicated um, mic and I have this adapter right here because the mic has a TRRS jack and the camera only accepts uh, the TRS, the normal mic uh, plug, and this converts it to it. And also not only the DJI, but uh, the GoPro was functioning in this way. So yeah, this is an extra accessory that sits on the helmet, but it comes with an advantage and that is the 90 degree angle on the connector, which the Love doesn't have. And this if uh, it connected directly into the adapter here would uh, stick out a lot more. So for mounting the lav mic into the helmet, I've just rolled the cable into a circle and then I have placed it under the padding on the right side and then I've clipped the padding and I am pretty lucky with this helmet because it has a really small place where uh, it's a cutout into the uh, foam, into the interior somewhere here and there's the perfect place to put a love mic. I don't know why they've designed it like this, or maybe it is a vent, <laughs> I don't know. But yeah, this uh, fits perfectly, the love right there, and it doesn't uh, touch my face or um, doesn't pick up any weird noises. And for mounting the camera onto the helmet, I have used the GoPro sticky plate and I have put it in a place where it has the most contact with the helmet. And I've used some adapters which are really tight right now. I have uh, tightened them with a ratchet and the eight millimeter socket, I think. And by doing it this way, it allows me to have the camera perfectly centered, the lens, I mean, with the helmet and this is the final result and also it has a lot of adjustment possibilities it is a bit crooked right now i don't know why but i think that when i'm using uh, when i'm wearing this helmet maybe i get it a bit sideways on my head i, I don't know i need to uh, find the culprit right here and uh, adjust the camera to the perfect level orientation right now let's say it is 98 percent perfect so yeah coming back to the mounting option that i have chose i think it is better than the 3d printed uh, options that some guys sell on the internet because it allows you to center the lens and not the camera to the helmet so yeah guys this is my complete motovlogging setup right now and i am very happy with it because everything comes out and can be installed back very quickly and easy and it will be complete when i will get the nd filters from amazon and i don't know when uh, this will happen but i hope soon and i hope this video helped you to get creative with your setup and get the best results of out of your um, camera and your mic so yeah hope you enjoyed hit the like button and I will see you in the next one.